Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. So we made it. I tried to uh, set up a call with Enrique since like months, but I'm very bad with meetings and, and appointments. So it didn't work until now that we are here. Uh, so thank you for, for being here. And uh, yeah, can you tell us a, a little bit about yourself? Uh, what do you do? What did you do? Uh, what you like now? <laughs> so I am software engineer in SIGAP, which is an amazing company. It's not something that I usually say to any company. And I, uh, we are currently focusing on trying to provide the best possible experience in Kubernetes environments and landscapes. So we are mostly trying to create good products. It's just as easy as it sounds, no? but it's, it's as challenging as, as it feels, right? Because sometimes uh, make something easy to understand and easy to use is just the hard part because obviously Kubernetes is such a great tool that normally you get lost in the details because it's so so open. That is also the good part and the bad part of Kubernetes. Like the app is so vast and dense that you can you can get lost in parameters or in the YAML. So I don't know. It's really, yeah, really interesting YAML, sometimes. <laughs> I get lost in YAML like all the time. So uh, that's definitely true. And what did you do before, like joining the Kubernetes force? What do you, what language I, do you know? And whatever. well, late, lately I was working on on Go, so that was my last language, and I can like Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before YAML driven de development, I was working on Go in in a in a innovation lab in a bank. And after the bank, I, w I went to a startup and I was operating Kubernetes. And I ended up uh, in, Kubernetes, in CIGAP. And before the innovation lab, I was working on Python and grokking things in Django. And before that, <laughs> I was front end. <laughs> so I kind of, uh, I, I kind of uh, mix of, uh, I, I, come, I, I am like uh, the joke like, if you want uh, some somebody who is front back operation and so on, you need an entire IT department. So I, I am an entire IT department. <laughs> you are a representation of all the IT department. That's fun. Yeah, that's fun. fun. Yeah, I have kind of the same experience because, like, few years ago, like seven years, maybe six years, I I was writing like Angular JS uh, and like. I wrote a Chromecast application as well. So I, I, in Java I, did, too, I did some commits to Angular and I earned the, the, the Angular t-shirt and I was really feel proud about that. It was a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It's um, more like fun and, weird. <laughs> fun and weird to use. But yeah, I mean, let, let's get started with the, the main topic here. So today we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna look at um, one project that I didn't look at it yet. And I'm, go and I'm saying that you, you will discover why later, but uh, <laughs> I'm saying that for the audience. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's called Permission Manager, and it's a UI for what I can tell um, that helps you to, to manage permission. And I have to say that I, the first time I used, not, not even like Kubernetes permission, I'm speaking about the, the AWS one, where you have to write like big JSON that you can do whatever you want with them. I was fascinated about the, the tuning of um, and how how capable it was um, as a tool. And Kubernetes is like the same. You you can do like you can really limit and like manage permission for in a very high granularity, but it's not easy. So can you tell us a little bit about the project and why you did it and how it works? Yeah, uh, the permission manager uh, handles two really dense topics, which is authentication and authority authorization. Sorry for my English. <laughs> so uh, what is uh, happening below the scene is uh, you create, uh, you can create cube configs to allow uh, users to access uh, seamless, seamlessly to a cluster, which involves uh, the authentication layer, which normally could be or service account or a user account which is normally the, 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 the preferred way to, because service accounts is uh, meant for operations, like a pod accessing 
uh, automate automating tasks. So that's uh, the the layer of authentication, uh, and and the and after that is the layer of authorization, which involves role based role based access control or uh, ABAC, uh, which is uh, I don't, I don't remember the <laughs> the acronym. <laughs> so so, so ABAC or ABAC is uh, <laughs> two ways of handle. Uh, permissions on how and what things you can do. So uh, mostly you have to create with the user, create a role binding, create the role uh, and use it all together and use a cube config to uh, allow you to access to all the all the layers. So as yeah, you can the, see- The cube, the cube um, like the cube config is what like the, for example, the cube key. you can use. Yeah, it's your, it's your key to access. Yeah, it's, it's just the, the way to prove that you are what you are, who you are. So, and with that cube config uh, inside the cluster, it, ma it makes everything in, in below the scenes with uh, custom resource definitions and, and mostly yeah, just from, that. From, yeah. the, from the chat, from the chat, we get a suggestion about a base attribute based access control. Yeah, I think yeah thank, you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Luca. <laughs> now we normally don't use attribute based because it's like uh, I think it's meant for uh, services inside the cluster because you normally it, I I don't know it's like uh, it's more fine grained and it's I don't know uh, that's one of the things Kubernetes uh, is so awesome because you can you can end it up doing whatever you want. And you don't have to install a plugin, set up with another. It's, it's already there, so it's it's, yeah, it's no, kind it's of really amazing. And it's, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, what I mean, what what impressed me about this is that, and I think I'm getting like in the mood that everything that has a, a, a UI like will become like famous quickly because people still use the UI. I'm I'm not used to it. I like to stay in my terminal and play with it, but I see like for like, I see how it's useful, but yeah, I mean, I was impressed about the growth of the project because like I'm looking at it right now and it on GitHub and it counts like almost 600 stars and it's yeah. pretty young project. So what, what did you learn about it or what did you learn about this high growth? Well, actually, uh, this project begins with Jaga San Santa Agostino that he created the first iteration and he made so almost all the all the effort so a lot of credit has to go on his side and and after i just uh, pick the pick the project and push it a little bit forward trying to make it more useful in in different environments for example we are struggling trying to make it work in aks because uh, authentication in AKS is handled by, by the IAM uh, access uh, controller. So it predates user accounts with its own way to, to allow you to access. So if you are trying to use the Kubernetes cluster with a normal user account, uh, you, are, you are banned because you are not in the IAM. Uh, okay. Yeah, in the IAM user store. So it's so, more like tr the attempt to merge <laughs> two different authentication and authorization like together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's one of the reasons I, I think a permission manager is really useful because it's abstract you of the details. As you can see, there is a lot of details in, in uh, regarding uh, what can you do in a cluster? Because obviously you need to, <laughs> you need to be. Yeah. It, it needs to be secure. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I, I think I, I usually when I when I look up the documentation for the Kubernetes authentication authentication authorization uh, stuff, like the first time I read it, it like already scares you because it says like Kubernetes like manage authentication authorization, but it doesn't care about user and like. Usually those stuff comes so close to each other that you start yeah. to imagine like, how can you do that without even knowing about the user? Uh, but everything has sense when you start to use it. So um, yeah, that, that's just because it's powerful since day one and it requires yeah. a little bit of structure. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna remember our like uh, 
the attendees that they can like write stuff on chat and interact with us because it will make everything a little bit funnier and it's it's more it's morning saturday so it's also a good way to stay awake and that <laughs> because that happens um so um we had a plan that was like Enrique shared his screen and he'd show us like a bunch of stuff about how it works but it looks like he can't share the screen because like uh, there are some permission issue in your lab in his, his laptop or whatever it doesn't work so we're gonna do something different i'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna try to make it work uh live here for me that i never see it uh so i i hope that for people that never tried uh it will look like good experience and for me that I never like used it we'll, and we will be able to make it uh, in some way. So this is going to be fun. Stay tuned. And we're going to start now. So I'm going to share my screen. And this is the project. Yes. I can't see what I'm sharing. So this is going to be fun. And uh, so let me know, Enrique, if you see it too small, too large, or whatever. Um, okay, so okay. this is the project. It is in SIGAP Permission Manager um, GitHub account. I pasted it on, on the chat before. And usually what I do when I start, I look at the readme. So that's right. I can do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So there, are, there are pretty images that already catch my attention. And there is Kelsey Tower that is using it. I see. <laughs> that's, that, that's that looks the, the, the admin. <laughs> yeah. That's the admin of the cluster, you know. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. I mean it's yeah, it's a guarantee of quality. <laughs> there are a bunch of screens. So I can use it to no user. I can create a user. That's cool. Oh, this is the list of all the things that I can do. I mean, I can enable or disable. Oh, the purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, like Airbag is based on resource. So yes. config map, endpoint, pods in Kubernetes like language, they are resource. So I see. So I can enable for every user what they can do what what they can access yes exactly and uh, and if they are only read access or write access and in which namespace so it's really 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 good enough to use um, mm -hmm. whatever i think i can i can imagine oh and, is, and this is how i get to the permission yeah. that i can you know exactly. this is also good for this is also good to allow people that are not like strictly developer to to manage the cluster in some way, because just I think that's the, that's the main reason uh, uh, that project, uh, this project gets so so much attention because it's uh, as as I hope you will see, it's really easy to install. <laughs> oh, that is installation guide. That's great. Yes. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> and there is IFAQ stuff. So I'm gonna use you, Rick, as IFAQ. So how it works? You you told me that. What is a template? <laughs> can you can you explain us what is a template? Yeah, a template is just a, a placeholder to put the, the the information that you are selecting. So we, what we create is the custom resource definition to hold that uh, YAMLs, and with the front you provide the the parameters that you want, and you mix that those two things together, and you have your cluster role binding and your user set up in Kubernetes. And that's all. It's really, uh, yeah, actually yeah. really easy. I see. And yeah, I also see that, like, I was I was wondering about why the concept of, of users were there, because as we spoke briefly before, like the user is not something that we know as a Kubernetes, <laughs> like. Yeah, and, you, and this, you, and this is a, a kind of a, a small hack Hack in the good sense because uh, we are using HCD as a user store, which is normally outside the Kubernetes scope. That's why the Kubernetes default stack doesn't handle users. It only mm -hmm. handles a, a RBAC and cluster role by then. And you have to provide outside the outside the cluster, the user store and, and the and the translation. So yeah, because because usually it is like usually company has their own like identity management like google account or whatever and they yeah you know, they use that i see that's that's exactly why we are uh, colliding with aks because we are trying to replicate what iam is doing outside the cluster so mm -hmm. 
uh, but but besides that, it's just the the same as any any user store. It's just uh, pointers to yeah. resources. <laughs> and how I mean, does this UI work, or or are you trying to figure out how how to make it work with external like identity provider in a good way, or at this stage, it, it requires you to manage your users here? Yeah, right now we are we are managing uh, users by hand. We have him, we are we're having plans on integrate with OAuth and mm -hmm. and it should be it should be an, an add-on after. So uh, so we want to have it like really really like Uni Unix philosophy. Like mm -hmm. Easy to use, easy to install, easy to make it, and just one sim single concept. And if you want a really good authentication and auto, uh, automat uh, aut automatization of uh, users, because you are having a third party user store like LDAP or whatever, with OpenID or SAML or whatever. So uh, you can have another piece that handles that uh, special. Uh, Task, which is uh, sync your third party user store with uh, the permission manager. So we are having like a straight Unix, Unix philosophy here. So right now you have to create all the all your users by hand. <laughs> or I, I mean, I, I think it's I think as you pointed out, it's one of the reason about why this project got so popular because um, like not having a place where you can store your user by default. It requires that you have to go to some other places and maybe for some like for from for small companies or for like toy projects that can be a limitation in this way you avoid that limitation but you are also locking yourself in a very small market so it would be it, it, it it's great to see that you are working to make it uh, functional with a more like generic environment like OAuth or Sam maybe you know yeah, we have a question in the live comments. <laughs> oh, so, let's, be, let's do it. Yeah, no, you're going to do the host now because I'm doing the, the so. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So we are ask, they are asking if, if we are compatible to another key value store like console. And the question is, the answer is whatever Kubernetes has below, we will use it because we just using a custom resource definition which we can, which is a standard API definition. Which, if you have a cluster with special requirements, that for example, if you want to use Postgres, I don't know if you can use Postgres. <laughs> uh, so. there, is, there, is a pro, there is actually a project. I think I think the question uh, yeah. has to be more detailed because I I don't know. Usually, Kubernetes is very related to ATCD because yeah. you can really change it. There, there are some projects like one from. Uh, Rancher that enables you to use SQL, but it's a very like new one. So I think yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, but, but yeah, I know. So so the question, the answer is we since we are using a standard AP calls, we are not using a directly HCD uh, connection. We can use whatever Kubernetes is doing in, in below. So another one. Okay. And that we work. Is, yeah. can, that if we work, that's great. <laughs> Do you have any plan of introducing third-party user stores in addition to in cluster CRD? Uh, yes, we have. A, we are having. We are developing right now another uh, component for permission managers that will handle that. So it will be eventually available. We are not. We are not sure of the scope of this that project because. We have to we have to figure it out a lot of stuff and I, obviously we we having we are we having conversation about how to how to uh, use it publicly because uh, in my head for example uh, that re that kind of third party automat automatization is uh, usually doing by large companies so we would like to offer a, a really good a really good a, a project that could be handled by large, large companies. So we have to figure out a lot of things. 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have to tell you a story because I recently spoke with Walter that is, uh, he works in Corley, that is a, a company in, in Turin. And uh, um, I mean, he was, he was so upset about the fact that like all the, um, all the integration that um, in some way are related to security and user, like a single like sign-on experience uh, are locked to like big enterprise or I, like they, they charge a lot to use them. Um, yeah. Like if you have to connect like Slack with your identity provider, or if you have to connect with uh, like GitHub with your identity provider and having a single sign-on experience in your company for your like employees, um, they charge you a lot. And uh, <laughs> he, like that, that's, that's it. I mean, we made a rough calculation, but it's a lot a month if you want to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, convert your, your ecosystem that usually is like a, almost like for free uh, uh, like ecosystem and maybe it's too much uh, it gets a lot of a lot a lot expensive and for him that is like a, a 10 like uh, 10 uh, people company um, it's it's a big limitation because he would really like to do it um, but he, like in some way it costs too much and it's weird that everybody complains about security but it costs like so high for compared <laughs> to what you get. But uh, what he showed me something that he's hacking around uh, with AWS Cognito. Um, this is like the service that manage identity in AWS for like external application. And he was able to, to use Cognito as a OAuth provider for like external services that he, that, that not, don't support it. So maybe Cognito for AWS is a good way to to abstract like the permission management management with you know identity management, so maybe that's the a direction. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, we need uh, we need a, a layer of communication with this mouth, maybe mainly, and as soon as it's available, we will publicly uh, spread the news because that's, that's something. Great. That's something we have in, in mind since day one that I went to SIGAP. I, I think it's one of the first things that it came to our minds. So, so yeah, I, 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 I'm eager to see it working. So and since I am the host, we also have the original author of Permission Manager with us. So Yaga is, Yaga is here. So I really thank you. I really want to thank him all the effort that he that he he do in in the project because managing CRS, the CRD and the and the certificate authority and the signing of the of the keys it wasn't an easy 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 thing to do even even if uh, Golan I, I I really have a, a soft spot a soft spot in 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 my heart with Golan because it, it ended up doing everything like really, really the, the way I like. But uh, signing certificates uh, through I, Golang is not, I, is not really, <laughs> it's not something that usually you do in your day basis. So <laughs> Yaga do the main, the main effort right now. And we are, we are over the shoulder or over his shoulders, creating more stuff. So yeah, I was just wanted to thank him. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm back, so I crashed for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry, I think. Uh, uh, okay. So you have to go to installation. Maybe it's the next uh, tab that you have. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to clone the, re the repo first because I yeah. think I, I have to do it. So I also got Mac, so I don't know how to auto type. So that will make everything <laughs> fine. I'm cloning the permission manager. Yeah. Maybe for me, you I'm need to make, make it, it a little bigger. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to get there. OK. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to just move it a little bit here. That's it. I think we're good. So I have the permission manager here. And I'm going to yes. open the installation tab, so I will so we will have something to we will double check if it's solid installation guy. Installation guy. That's it. Okay, so I have to do QC the guy no. reference to yeah, right. <laughs> you have to edit the the secret first or use it afterwards. 
Uh, you got me. Um, <laughs> this you is went... not your fault. It's, that it's me not reading. Yeah, yeah. You, you <laughs> went, you, I, I, I have the same problem with you. Like, I, I went to the straight <laughs> code. If it's not in the code. <laughs> <laughs> so first, I have to uh, tell you that I have a, a, a cluster running. So if I do yeah. get, get namespace, it should work. Yeah, I have a... I, I boot I boot it up with time. So yeah. I'm gonna do. Oops. <laughs> um, I, I told you I, I can type. So alt secret. Yeah. And what I have to do because I didn't read it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, easy, it's really easy. No, no, it's really easy. Just, just use something that you can type easily after, <laughs> because uh -huh. it's a demo. So. <laughs> Yeah. In production, so you should use something use, sensitive. <laughs> I'm using your demo. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's it. OK. Well, the only thing you need to do. OK. So mm. after that, I'm You need to apply, to, yeah. Just apply namespace. <laughs> Create it, and I have to. OK. Okay. So it looks like I created a namespace successfully. And what the other apply does is it, it applies my secret. It, yes. uh, oh, it, it looks for the permission for the namespace. And it, it applies cluster role binding. That's good. That's, that's the templates that okay. we are going to use for the cluster role binding after. Um, uh, and I'm looking for okay, and this is the cluster, the customer, the custom resource definition that exactly. installs the, the user stuff. Yes. So the, a custom resource definition, if you if you attendees never saw it, uh, integrates like a functionality, a completely new functionality into the Kubernetes flavor. Uh, so it means that I can do Let's get see this. user probably no, no user. I oh, get CRDs and it gives me a new CRDs. And if I do, I think it's yeah, yeah the exactly <laughs> yeah. If I if I do the the get permission the get the get command uh, with the name of the CRDs, I get no 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 resources found because there is nothing inside. If I type like a kubectl get like something that doesn't exist for sure like this, mm -hmm. uh, I get that the resource doesn't work. So it means that for like magically or like based on the work that uh, Sigap and Enrique did, um, there is a new resource managed by Kubernetes that the, is the user's one. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, we made it. So now for <laughs> us, little more edit Kubernetes deployment. Demo. Okay. Just before that, I yep. uh, made a, a QCTL. A config get context, or no, get context, uh, yeah, config get con current context. Okay, and ah, damn it, I forgot the. <laughs> uh, in order to, re to retrieve the actual uh, control plane uh, URL, you need to get the. Uh, for maybe it's cluster info. Cluster info, sorry, I always forgot, yeah, cluster info. Yeah, that, that one. The first one. Yeah. So okay. now you can edit. And now. <laughs> so a cluster name, it has to be kind kind because you get it with cluster info. <laughs> I think this is already no, no, good no. because kind of... kind is less kind, I think. Oh. You can you can check it in the cube config. And, oh, okay, we check it. Yeah. And, yeah. and the control and this plane is address the control is plane the, address. That, yeah. the one that we just copied. Exactly. I presume. <laughs> okay. So let okay, me see. Yeah, that's, that's right. And yeah. Um, okay. I don't know about how to take the the uh, cluster name, but uh, maybe it's inversion. No, no, no. Okay, in, in ah, maybe it's in. No, it's not. No, it's in config. Uh, config uh, something. 
Get context. In plural, context. Oh, context. Okay, so oh, okay. It's, it's Last name is Kind Kind. Yeah. That's right. So For we sure. made it right. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Let's That's apply. It? Yeah, let's apply it. <laughs> that looks too simple. Yeah. Dead easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I presume I have everything in this permission yes. ledger namespace. So if I do get pod and yep. it's creating. So this is this is the UI in some in this is <laughs> this is the Yes, or that's no. exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's both UI and and server. Okay. Because, because, because the server has the the logic. It, it also has the logic for the CRDs, or the CRDs is already. No, the CRDs is already is in the seats that you are applied. So. Okay. This is How the. How do I find? It? Is it in in the cube system? The I mean, CRD. the controller for the controller for the CRDs. Uh, the controller of CRTs is uh, Kubernetes. <laughs> it's a control place um, uh, because it's, it's, it's normal API primitives. So we only said that he can have access to there, those things. And it's just that. So I it's inside Kube system and it's, uh, there is no controller, a specific fun controller for that part because it's. Uh, oh, I see. Because it's just the plain, uh, plain primitives of the API. So what is in that pod in Permission Manager is the the proxy uh, in a way to that translate the front to the the primitives of the API. It's just only a call after. I see. So I think okay, it's running. Running. so. Next thing that you have to do is port uh, forwarding. In order to have uh, okay. access, in. Yeah. The, uh, it's in the in the in the is the easiest path, the easiest path, because otherwise you have to pro, uh, publish the. Yeah, and also, also I, as I say, this is the first time I have a Mac, so I don't know how Docker for Macs works, and I would never get to it. So let's do the port forwarding. Yeah. Uh, port forward. Port forward and service. I think I have to. Yeah. Do. Permission man and permission yeah. manager. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Permission. Manager. Oh, I have to take the service, not this one. Yeah. Only uh, S SBC is uh, yeah. Permission manager. And I think it's just that. Let me check. I need to set up port equation. Yeah. Four thousand it is it's looking good. So let me let me fall back. Okay, it's oh, okay. It's called permission measure service. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. SBC. Yeah, exactly. Now, now we I have. I think up. if I let's see if it works because I have no idea <laughs> if it's gonna work or not. It, oh, it's it working. Is, yeah, admin obviously. It, it should be demo. Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. And this is demo because it's the one that I put in the secret. Yes, exactly. Nice. Oh, that's it. Ah, that's so nice. I have a UI. <laughs> now, now we can go home. <laughs> exactly. That's it. We made, we made it. That was a very productive Saturday morning. <laughs> now let's okay, get, let's so, create that user. <laughs> so I'm gonna create an Enrique. Enrique, I'm gonna create a your user. Okay. And you, you are not, you are developer and operator. What do, how, how do you like to define yourself? I think for now it should be operator, maybe okay. developer. Okay. We can we can check the uh, info between the difference in one of another. Oh, nice! The operator can do everything, and the developer can do almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Now uh, you're gonna be an operator because you yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna take care of it later. <laughs> I, I, I oh, want to think they... myself like God right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. So you're going to be, oh, so, okay, okay. I can pick a namespace or I can go with all namespace. That's fine. Yeah. Um, 
That's good. I'm gonna give you only space because I, I I'm that kind of guy. So if Giacomo <laughs> is there, he knows that I'm I, I'm open. Uh, so you're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna have read and write. I mean, yeah. I'm just joking, but it's it's super powerful that you can do all like I don't know I don't remember how to sh how to sh share with you, but the the equivalent of this is like a gigantic like YAML with a lot of parameters that you don't know about and. Only the fact that you can see them here listed is already like a lot because it's just when you buttons. start with Kubernetes, <laughs> yeah, when you start about Kubernetes, you don't even know what you can do or not do, and having this is already like a lot. Yeah. So I save it. So I have a new user, and now I see that there is a show cube config for Enrique, and it's loading. Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh. Okay, maybe we can, this maybe is, we can try again. Ah, this is the demo god, I'm swearing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. What's happening? Oh god. Ah, 401, an authorize, I presume. I ah, maybe the, maybe the... Port forwarding? The port forwarding go, goes out, maybe? Uh, check check the port forward. Just one, for one second. Ah, maybe it's broken. No, it's there. No, it's there. Damn it. So let's troubleshoot it. <laughs> so we can we can check the logs maybe of the of the pod. Yeah. To see what's happening. Let's see what's happening. I, I love this. Uh, it's gonna be great. Uh, I'm just gonna start Emax and I'm gonna do the pod. Uh, okay, so get pod. No, the pod permission manager. And so I think I have to do get logs. Yeah, logs. Yeah, we have we have some on some live comments like Yaga. It says it's currently pointing to a really really nice uh, thing that obviously the CRDs is only the user store, and you can use it. Uh, uh, Potentially, users could be from anywhere else that is supported Kubernetes authorization. So, oh, CRDs nice. is only to store the 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 username for to say to say it plainly. So, okay, yeah, I see. It. it says that. So you are Kubernetes. using Kubernetes one eighteen, right? I I'm the guy that that used always new stuff. Okay, so we need to. <laughs> We have that back uh, in our in our issues yesterday or two days ago. Uh, so, <laughs> so there is an issue for that, or we're yeah. an issue for that. <laughs> you don't need it. You, you, you can you can show interest in the issue. Is I think is the second one in the number twenty one. I think yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to, we're going to all to place a reaction here and say Yeah, we should do it. <laughs> I'm going to be confused. I feel confused. So. Uh, and we I, made our open source contribution for today. Guys, <laughs> if you want, just go and react on the issue 21 because we are all stopped by it. <laughs> um, that's it. Okay, we made it. Now, what, what we can do to fix it? I have to roll back my cluster in some way. Uh, I think uh, we can well, just call it done because from here it's it's kind of easy, I presume. From here, you would get the, the, the cube, cube coffee. coffee. Yeah. So if you want to see the live, you uh, there are two options. Uh, figure it out what's going on with the CRD and the API machinery with his which I which I tried, not not extensively, but I tried. Um, I mean, are you I, asking me to troubleshoot and fix no, this? No, 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 no. No, I, I just picture in the bad path and then show you the light. Like if we create a kind, a Kubernetes kind in one seventeen, I think it's going to be just okay, really straightforward. So I just have to figure out kind install old version because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Ah, we can have a really good project for that. <laughs> How to install a specific version of Kubernetes? No, this is not with kind. As if somebody knows in the chat, the space is yeah. Kind. I, I I know how to. Let me just pick the. 
end-to-end -end testing that we have. Uh, make, okay, beam make file. Sorry be, for not being able to, uh, to cast my, 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 my laptop. I don't know. We will, we will do it for the second time. Uh, I mean, I would like to, I, I changed my mind. So this is my stream. We're going to do okay. something different. So from, <laughs> I'm just joking, but no, from, no, from here, from here is, is it is it kind of, I think, clear? Like you will get, if you don't use 118, that for now, for now is blocked by the issue number 21, if you can follow with the subscri subscribe button that I'm just gonna do. Um, you will get the, the, like the cube config and the cube config can be used by uh, automation, like the client go, in your Go project or from the QCT CTL to connect and yeah. authorize the cluster. So the permission manager workflow ends as soon as you can copy this and paste it to uh, somebody or into some servers, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I want to do with you, because you, you know the code, I would like to see some code here because yeah. I'm attracted by this directory because I like testing. <laughs> so, how do you do end-to-end -end tests? With, uh, with because we it, looks do it. Like, it looks like a lot because it's like there is a UI, there is Kubernetes. You have to boot them all and see how it goes. So, I think that's cool, and I would like to, to know how you do it. So, right now you can test it uh, already because oh, yeah. uh, all the requirements that you need to, if you go to end-to-end -end test, uh, if you search for end-to-end -end, in in the make file, I mean, like. Oh, and to end, I yep. have a yarn. Yarn test. And I think I have it. I and it will I... it will run up a uh, Cypress. I, I... Let's see. Well, VR. I don't have it. But no, I no, no. No, you have to install. A, you have to go to end to end test. A, the a folder. A CD end to end oh. test. Um, yeah, it's here. Yeah, and, to, um, and you have to install the NPM, then jump test. OK, so I go inside end to end, and I do NPM install. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to take, we're going to see all the dependencies that this project use. And usually not the JS, it means like all the internet. Yeah, while while we are downloading the internet, we can we can check a little of the of the code of that part if you want, because it's going to be yeah. like two or three minutes. Uh -huh. So, in the Cypress folder, I think Cypress. Can... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there is the uh, example JSON. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. I think uh, everything else is this is just like really the DC way to, and there is the there is the, the good part integration is the is the way to make way to make the the end to end testing. I see. Create a user and save QQQ. And I think if I yeah. if I not if I remember it correctly is Yasmin. Uh, Jasmine language, uh -huh. and it's yeah. just like find this button, push it, push it, wait for it's working, wait for whatever. Nice. Click it, and and it it uses kind to do the the to spin up Kubernetes. Uh, it uses whatever you are putting in your local host four thousand port. Oh, <laughs> uh, so it's my it's oh, okay, so it's on me. Yeah, right now it's on you because yeah yeah you are you are using it locally. Uh, I have a drone integration that put, that you see all uh, all on his side. But since we are testing testing everything in already, it's not it's not already in in the, so in, the in, in my case in my case I can't run the test because I'm using yes. it will use my kind and it will they will fail. Yes 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 yes. yes. Okay, that, that's good. Okay, so oh. There is no the directory is not in the Git anymore. Is it right? The node models. Huh? Because because I see that my number of files is growing. Yeah. 
So I presume it's not ignored. <laughs> no, it's not ignored. Can, can, we, can we ignore it together? Yeah, sure. I would like to make my first contribution. So feel free. That's it. End to end. Uh, just not models because in in the web client is also you said so. Yeah. Ah, that's way better. So I'm gonna do git. I'm using. I'm starting to use gh that is yeah, like it's... a CLI from uh, like the GitHub guy, and they are. It's very good. So I can do repo fork. I'm gonna and it's forking CGAP permission manager. I'm yeah. using. And it also do. I, I did it yesterday, and it's super smart because it changed the the like the, it changed the origin, my yeah. remote yeah. from <laughs> origin that usually is my, the, like the original one. Like this is great. I love it. when I saw it. I'm like, ah, oh, this is my project forever. I'm gonna use it forever. So now I can do it. Check out. Oof. What upstream? I don't like that name. Upstream is sometimes. I, I usually name. use I usually use upstream for. I mean, yeah, for yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the original the... project. It's, it's the really yeah, yeah, yeah. for me. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do fix, ignore, not, not mod. Yeah. I'm gonna check out Kubernetes stuff because we don't need them. Yep. And also, I mean, I'm just gonna commit the git ignore. Yeah. Uh, git ignore not models. <laughs> well, while they're doing, uh, they are work. They are <laughs> asking in the live comments that uh, it's working GH. I mean, I I was using Hub because I found GH a little bit too early in maturity. So the, the, yeah. he was really. I mean, I never used Hub before, so I don't know. I don't know why, but I never feel the like the need. But I, as soon as I saw GH, I kind of took it, and I think I'm happy with it. So yeah, uh, yeah, I keep with that. Well, also we have we have the solution to install kind in a previous version, but I think it's not safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is so easy that explaining this this takes too much. Uh, maybe maybe I uh, can what? approve it. <laughs> oh, there is. Do we have to to uh, ignore the package lock as well, or? Uh, I think we should. No, yeah. It, anyway, yeah. I'm just gonna leave it for the git ignore, and you will make the the, the one the lock <laughs> one if you. If yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. you you didn't look so convinced, so I don't want. To. <laughs> um, oh, and I, I didn't set up auto completion in my laptop yet, so I'm just. Yeah. Okay, I think it's working, and I also love this feature. So now that I can I can click here, we go to the. That's it, guys. We made we made our first contribution almost. Okay. That's it. Okay. okay, so let me stop sharing my screen and stop to make those rambling. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I don't know if you oh include oh okay, we have Agostino that says included, and I think he's a good authority for us. So I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I'm gonna share my screen again. Gonna do it. Thanks. Pack, package lock because yeah yeah I'm a, I, mean, I tend to write comments in the getting ignored because I usually forget but yeah uh, no of course I didn't I did nice pull request no, not that nice because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Why? I, I don't know how to commit. Oh, OK, that's it. OK, we made it. Uh, OK. Get back to this. Um, 
Okay. Looks like, <laughs> yeah, somebody's going to ask for uh, <laughs> approved. No, that's great. I mean, uh, we are very close to one hour of streaming, and I think it, it, it went like amazing looking at the fact that like two minutes before starting, we figured out that uh, Enrique wasn't able to share his screen. So I think we made a good good one. Um, Thank so you so much. If there are any questions, if there are any questions on the uh, like any question, leave it on the channel and the Twitch chat right now because we are gonna close the stream like in three minutes maybe. So uh, Enrique, if you have something to say to wrap up, do it now. Yeah. Well, uh, as you can see, permission manager is dead easy, uh, uh, and you can you can have a lot of things just uh, from scratch without knowing too much of the details below. So I think we are we are so proud of the of the project that it started with Jaga and he made an amazing work. And I am really proud to continue on, on the, the work he's, he was doing. And we are looking forward to show you next next things in the in the near future. Like uh, like the things that, that we are talking about, the wow integration maybe. And obviously, make it work in AKS, which is the most requested feature in the issues right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> um, yeah. in, in, in that terms, it's like uh, we are switching from user uh, account to service account. And as you can imagine, you have to create the, the custom calls of, uh, of the API through the client go uh, code. And it's a really, really nice challenge because, you know, <laughs> oh, oh, is, is, Kubernetes is so dense that you, you can have... Uh, oh, one of the challenges that we have to, to tackle is trying to use the client for a, a lot of different Kubernetes clusters. So it's going to be fun. So stay, That's stay, right. <laughs> stay in uh, touch. Yeah, so the, the roadmap road looks really fun and challenging. So I... Um, uh, like I would like to thank you and Andrea for the suggestion about the client cluster and also Cristiano for the, for that. Um, yes. Like this, this looks to me like a, another contribution. So I'm not gonna do it because I, I, have, st I have stuff to do. But if you want, no, uh, no, no, no. submit more documentation because it's gonna be it's gonna be useful for for my next time until one eighteen we work. Um, <laughs> So yeah, thank you, Enrique, for coming. I hope that uh, everybody enjoys like the presentation. Um, I'm going to move this to YouTube, and I'm gonna edit the article that I wrote with uh, the recording and a few other links that I will uh, and I will and Enrico and Enrique will also send me so uh, to have more details about the, the issue um, about the project. So thank you for spending an hour with us, and Enrique, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I'm I'm really proud. Thank you.